if the predictions are true that our officials are putting out there, we're in for a rough patch. We're looking at another month. Turn your Bibles to the old book, to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 1, and begin reading with me. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my word. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel, and the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand. And he reworked it into another vessel, as it seemed good for the potter to do. Then the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter has done, declares the Lord. Behold, like clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. If at any time I declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it, and if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I intended to do to it. And if at any time I declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it, and if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will relent of the good that I had intended to do to it. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. As history records in the old book, Israel was destined for a fall. I'd like to share something with you, written by a friend of mine. The coronavirus has turned our world upside down. Our lives have been changed forever like they were on 9-11. As we said then, we will not forget, we say again. But let me ask you to lean in and consider something that I believe is very important. How many times have you said or heard others say, I am ready for things to get back to normal? Now, let me ask you, do you really want things to get back to normal? What has been normal? Shooting children and teachers in school, murdering police officers, killing people in worship assemblies, killing co-workers in cold blood, dysfunctional government, a divided nation, overwhelming hatred. Let me suggest that we learn some very important lessons from this and not return to normal. But let's make things better than the normal we knew. Let's be more loving to one another. Let's be more forgiving to others than we have been. Let's be more sensitive to the needs of the poor and give them a hand. Let us look for opportunities to do good to all men, especially those of the household of faith. Let us show more concern for those who are confined in nursing homes or places like that. Let's be more aware of the needs of the elderly, especially those that are homebound right now. 
Let's count our blessings for the freedom to worship in an assembly with other Christians and not forsake the assembly, even if that assembly needs to be online right now. Let's count our blessings for the freedom to worship. Let's be more liberal in our giving to spread the gospel, God's power to save to the whole world. Let's do more commending instead of condemning. More listening instead of talking. And praising instead of complaining. Let's commit ourselves to studying the Word of God and spend less time on entertaining ourselves. To pray to God instead of ignoring or even insulting Him. And choosing Jesus instead of sports or movies or anything else that robs us of the joy of Christian living. And let's use the Facebook to tell the story of Jesus and encourage all of our friends as we make our way through this sometimes and oftentimes dangerous world. So do you want to get back to normal? <laughs> Not on your life. Doors are being opened right now and we need to pass through them. Embrace what is there and not settle for going back, but to go forward. Please, Lord, don't let me return to normal. Let me be and do better. Help me to know that I am not in charge, but that you are. I come humbly before you and commit myself fully to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So while we may be looking forward to some difficult times, I am encouraged by what I see. When I see people coming together in prayer, lifting each other up, when I say neighbors reaching out to neighbors and embracing the kinds of things that Brother Ted Knight recommended we embrace, then 